Mike Gonzalez joins me now. He's a senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation and also author of The Plot to Change America, How Identity Politics is Dividing the Land of the Free. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, first of all, I've got the open letter here from around 150 activists, uh, writers, academics, and here they denounce what they call the restriction of debate. Why is this so important to, and why now? I am, thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm very happy that this group of liberals decided to do this. Uh, this is this should be very worrisome, especially to liberals, old style liberals who care about liberty, about freedom, about freedom of speech, about freedom of association. Uh, this has now become rampant on the left. This idea that you have to uh, you you cannot allow expressions uh, that in any way are are conservative. Uh, this goes back, as I say in my book, The Plot to Change America, as you mentioned. This goes back to Herbert Marcuse, who wrote an essay called Repressive Tolerance. Obviously, this that's a contradiction in terms. And what he said in that essay, which he wrote in 1966, is that the views of conservatives would have to be suppressed and only leftist views would have to be allowed. It, a Orwellian kind of thing. This is now being implemented. And this group of liberals came out and and. and and I'm very, I'm very happy they did this. And they were all liberals and they attacked conservatives. And I don't care about that because they, they attacked the right thing. Cancel culture. It must be attacked by all sides. OK. And we're hearing a, a lot about this term or we're hearing the term used a lot, cancel culture. How would you define it? Well, the attempt to cancel you completely, to, to get you fired, to, get, to make you unable to get another job, uh, to 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 drive you from the public space, from the marketplace of ideas. This has happened to many people in the arts. This has happened to many people in media. People who used to be uh, seen and heard all the time are now they're, they're like Trotsky uh, under Lenin, who are or under Stalin, who was airbrushed out of photos. Uh, uh, so so we're going back to this Stalinist idea that if you uttered a, a, an executive from Boeing. Uh, was summarily fired uh, last week because 33 years ago, that is a full generation ago, he espoused the view that women should not be in combat, a view that 33 years ago in the late uh, 80s was completely uncontroversial. This, this man no longer holds that view, and yet he was fired by Boeing. And is social media to blame? Is it, is it killing free speech, would you say? Well, social media has been a great equalizer. Social media has allowed conservatives to claw back some space. Uh, back when I was growing up, uh, you had the three networks, uh, and that's all you had. And all the three networks were led by uh, anchormen who were, in this country, that is, in the United States, who were quite liberal. So social media allowed some space to conservatives, and the left became very upset about this. But look, this is all one-sided. Nicole Hannah-Jones, the creator of the New York Times 1619 Project, wrote a very uh, a scandalous, a racist uh, screed uh, 25 years ago in which she described the, the, the white race as a bunch of devils. Uh, it was really a, 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 an op-ed that was in every way racist, and yet okay. she's not fired. Her Pulitzer Prize has not been rescinded. Mike, she's we not have run out of time, I'm afraid. Mike Gonzalez, thank you so much for your time on this important subject. Thank you.